Grab a cup of tea or a glass of wine and tune in for inspired conversations with publisher Linda Joy on Tuesdays at 2 p.m. Eastern. Linda creates sacred space for leading female luminaries, empowering authors, heart-centered female entrepreneurs, coaches, and healers. A soulful venue where guests openly share the fears and obstacles they've overcome, wisdom and lessons learned, and the personal journey that led them to the transformational work they do in the world. Inspired conversations to empower you on your path to authentic, soulful living. Welcome to Inspired Conversations. I'm so honored that you're circling up with me and my special guest today because we have a in truly inspiring conversation ready for you today. Do you know that you have the power in every moment to intentionally create your dream life? Conscious Choices Coach Mary McGuirk shares insights and methods today on how you can become a match with your dream reality by consciously choosing your thoughts, and she shares why it's so important to do this playful work. Mary empowers and teaches her clients how to make conscious choices that align their thoughts, beliefs, and actions with the dreams and visions they hold for their life. As a Master Law of Attraction coach and Desire Factor coach, Mary's unique methodology, empowering use of storytelling, and her supportive non-judgmental coaching style supports clients in understanding where their predominant vibration is and how they can consciously choose to create the outcomes that they desire. Mary, I am so excited to have you here today. Thank you. I'm excited to be here this afternoon as well. Well, this is such an important topic, right? Because, um, you know, you've been in my summit, you write for Aspire Magazine, you know, I love your wisdom. And I, I was so thrilled that we chose to focus on this topic, because I think so many of us forget that we do have the power to choose, right? Our thoughts, our beliefs, our vibration. What I love about your work, Mary, is that you actually give strategies and processes and methods to help them shift those thoughts. So let's let's dive right in. So what does it mean when you say um, we're one thought away from our dream reality? Because I, I love the energy of that. I love the sound of that. But what's that mean to you? It, that is a wonderful statement, isn't it? <laughs> I love that too. Empowering. It's empowering. It gives you hope. Yes, yes, yes. Um, so really, we're at any given moment, we're one thought shift away from a thought that leads us to our dream. And I'll explain what a shot, uh, excuse me, what a thought shift is. But we're always one thought shift away from our dream. So one thought leads to another thought, which leads to another thought, which, you know, eventually gets us to our dream. And we get to choose what that thought is to get us to the desired result. Um, I will talk about that hopefully later on. I'll talk about how we choose that thought. Um, but that's really what it means. It's just incrementally shifting your thoughts to get you to your dream. So a lot of us though, right? I, I'm looking back like I've been on this path 30 years. So prior to that, I used to think I was my thoughts, right? Like, like I would let them control me, my emotions, my, my uh, moods. And it wasn't until I realized that we don't have to, I don't want to say listen, but really we don't have to listen and take on our thoughts if they don't empower us. How did you get to that point of going, this is the work I want to do in the world with helping people see they do have a choice about the thoughts they choose to focus on? You know, I love the um, the idea that we don't have to keep a thought. Any thought that pops into Head, we don't have to keep it. <laughs> you can choose to let that one go and choose a different one. And you know, once I learned that myself, I thought, wow, this is just really awesome. I love this and I want to empower other people to do it. I want to teach other people to do it. And so that's how I got there. But it's so the reason I love it is, you know, sometimes we feel, I, I'll speak for myself. I used to believe in my first 30, 35 years, and it's going to be 62, that. I was a victim of my thoughts, right? Because I would follow them down a damn rabbit hole. 
<laughs> right? And then I'd be uh, like, right. how did I get here? Well, the only way I got there, I mean, hindsight's twenty twenty when you have the knowledge, right? Mm -hmm. I, when I look back, I'm like, I followed the thoughts down into the rabbit hole, right? And so that's why I really believe in the work that you're doing, because it puts the power back in our hands, back in our minds. Like it, it, it gives us that, as you use the word choice, to choose the thoughts that we want to give energy to. So do you consider like, is there, do you identify the thoughts in a certain way? Like in my energy field, it's like, if it makes me feel good, then it's an empowering thought. If it makes me feel less than, then it's not. And that's how I differentiate. But do you have any tips on that of how someone can identify where they are with their thoughts? Certainly. If it, it's kind of like what you just said. If a thought feels good, then it's a good thought. If it doesn't feel good, if it makes you, if it's draining your energy, if it's um, making you feel bad, um, less than anything like that, then it's not a thought that you want. And you want to move your thoughts in the direction, like you, you mentioned, going down a rabbit hole. It's kind of like you know, there's no such thing as going up a rabbit hole, I guess, <laughs> but kind of like going up instead with your thoughts. Instead of going down a rabbit hole, you're going up. And so you're choosing thoughts that continue to make you feel better. And I call that a thought shift. Um, it's conscious, consciously choosing a thought that moves you in the direction that you want to go towards your dreams in small increments. And so it's shifting your thought in incrementally. Each time you do that, you're kind of forming a, a bridge to what you desire. I kind of call it a bridge. And actually, I touched on the bridge a little bit in an article that I wrote for Aspire magazine called Seven Reasons Why Day-to-Day -day Desires Lead to Achieving Your Dream. And so we, I mentioned a little bit about that dream in that article. Well, that's what I, I love what you said about incremental, because sometimes we feel that um, in order to make a big shift in our life, we've got to do big things. I call them micro shifts, um, whatever it is I'm working on, right? It, I don't need a big leap. So I love, love, love that you said incremental steps towards your dream. So it isn't about having to make these big changes in our thought, because that becomes a little overwhelming to think, doesn't it? Oh, yes, for sure. You know, if, if you're thinking, you know, right now I'm sitting here without a college degree and I want to be a doctor and I'm going to get there in two years. Well, that's overwhelming. Or just the, even the thought that, that you could be a doctor. That can be overwhelming. Um, also, I, I kind of like to think that sometimes you just can't get there from there. <laughs> that would be nice if we could do that. Just jump from, you know, where we're, where we're feeling and make that big leap, but it just doesn't really work that way. Um, so wherever you are in your current belief, you're taking it to the next level, to something you can believe that gets you one step closer to another thought that you can believe. So you're just taking those incremental leaps in belief as well as, you know, changing your thought. And that's how you can get yourself, um, to your dream. You're moving closer and closer by changing your thoughts. So I have it's and it's so empowering. And, and one of the things as I was processing, I was trying to bring myself back to that time is uh, my thoughts were so unconscious. So I was never paying attention to, are they empowering? Are they belittling? What are they? I think for me, it was, I had to become aware of my thoughts first, right? I had to, I had to become aware going, hmm, how does this make me feel? Do you feel that so many of us, just because the way the world and we are wired, that sometimes we're not even realizing that we're unconsciously being guided by unconscious thoughts? Oh, of course. <laughs> I think probably that most of the world is is that way. Um, it's, you know, when you really start to, to do the work and, you know, pay attention to your thoughts, um, that's when you can start shifting. But I would say the vast majority of people don't do that. They're not thinking about their thoughts. They're not thinking consciously and intentionally um, about how they want to live their life and how their thoughts are contributing to what they're getting in life and how they um, can change them, that they even can change them for that matter, to get what they want. 
to experience something different. Yeah, and and that's why, like even your article for Aspire and when you spoke in my summit and having you here today is ladies, um, as you're listening, I want you to just take it in because I, I believe we all have these moments, even if it's quick ones where we go, oh, I'm not liking how I feel as I think about this situation. That's your intuition speaking to you going, hey, if you don't like what you feel, how about if you choose a new thought? But usually we don't go to that next step. And that's why I wanted Mary here to show you and share with you that it is possible to choose a new thought instead of following the one that makes you feel less than or stressed or overwhelmed. So we're going to take a quick break, Mary. When we come back, let's continue this conversation. I am with Mary McGurk. You can learn more at lifejustbeyond.com. We'll be right back, my friends. Connecting you with the best of the conscious minds in the world. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. Within you is the ability to consciously choose your thoughts and decisions. Making conscious choice transforms everything from your day-to-day -day experiences to the direction your life takes and the achievement of your dream life. Conscious Choices coach Mary McGuirk empowers and teaches her clients how to make conscious choices to align their thoughts, beliefs, and actions with the dreams and vision they hold for their life. As a Master Law of Attraction coach and Desire Factor coach, Mary's unique methodology empowering the use of storytelling and her supportive non-judgmental coaching style supports clients to understand where their predominant vibration is and how they can consciously choose moment by moment to create the outcomes they desire. Just beyond your everyday experiences, your heartfelt desires are calling you to life. Learn more at lifejustbeyond.com. Ascending Hearts is no ordinary dating site, but a spiritual dating site with a purpose to link you with your soulmate. We engineer the serendipity so you can trust that you will attune with someone that has the same matching vibration as you. Ascending Hearts, the conscious dating site for the spiritually aware. Try Ascending Hearts for free, ascendinghearts.com. Consistently attract soulmate clients begin showing up on brand, monetizing on your calling. Welcome all spiritual coaches, leaders, healers, light workers, and practitioners to a show that turns you on in your business and amplifies your magnetism. I'm host, catalyst, and spiritual business coach, Rosalind Fung, and I'm here to journey with you into the juicy and help you discover where the real gaps are. Ignite your mindset and soul with strategies and systems as each episode takes you to the sweet spot that activates your soulgasmic business by tuning in on Tuesdays at 10 a.m. Mountain. Join me for your light language activation and let's magnetize and monetize. Your conscious lifestyle on steroids. Ohm Times Radio. IOM FM. Welcome back. You're listening to Inspired Conversations. I'm your host, Linda Joy. And with me today is Conscious Choices Coach, Mary McGuire of lifejustbeyond.com. And we're talking about thought shifts and what it means to be just one thought away from your dream reality. So right before the break, Mary, we we're talking about thought shifts and how um, we have the power to make incremental changes towards the thought we're having now and um, shifting it so it's heading in the direction of that dream that we have in our heart. And everybody's dream may be different. So I know you covered about the giant leaps, but how do we go from this current unbelievable thought to a believable one. Because I think that's where people go, well, I don't know how to think something different because those are my thoughts. What would you say to that? Um, first, I have an analogy I wanted, I want to tell you about. Yeah, please. About the, the big leap, about how you get there from there. You know, like I can't, I can't get there from where I'm at right now. And so, like, when I was traveling in Paris, you know, the subway there the, called the Metro, uh, it was like a spider web. Like, anywhere on the Metro, you if you wanted to get 
from where you're at to another place. You might be one or two stops away from where you can change to another train to get one or two stops to another place where you can change to another train and you can just keep changing trains one or two stops away from where you were so you can get from where you were to where you wanted to go easily in these little in, in these little changes by train um so it was like you know kind of a thought shift <laughs> conversely when i lived in new york city there were many times there that i couldn't get from where i wanted to go to where from where i was to where i wanted to go without going way 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 out of my way <laughs> to do it because this new york subway is not like the sort of the spider web of the Paris subways. And so I think the Paris subway is a, a great analogy to use for shifting your thought to the next level. So it's almost so like I, envision a spider web is what you mean, right? It's yeah. like you can, you can keep shifting until you're on the rail or the path that you want to be on. Right. Um, like, let's say you're in San Diego and you want to get to Seattle. You would need to go to Los Angeles, and then you'd need to go to San Francisco and Portland, and then you're in Seattle. I also like to say, uh, you know, it's kind of like Abraham's emotional scale, where, you know, you might be at jealousy, and you can't jump to love from jealousy. You've got to go through a few steps to get there. You might need to go to anger, and then doubt, and frustration and then maybe optimism and you know you're working your way up to the joy and the love and stuff so it's kind of like that so you're you're moving your thoughts incrementally to or in that case your emotions but you're moving your thoughts in, incrementally for example maybe you want to get um you want to travel to a new country for a month and your thoughts might currently be well I can't possibly leave my family I can't take more than a few days I've never done anything like this before without a lot of input from everyone um, in my life. So some incremental thoughts might be in, in what I call bridge thoughts. Well, people do this all the time. So if others can do it, maybe I can. So that moves you a little closer. What if I can be away from my family for a large block of time? Again, you're getting a little closer. It may have been true in the past that I got everyone's input into how I should live my life. And I can change that anytime I choose to do so. So now you're getting even closer. So that's kind of what I mean by taking your thoughts to the next level. Oh, I love that. And I could see it's almost like, um, it's really almost like energetically rephrasing, right? Because mm -hmm. when we're in that, those limiting thoughts, there is no other way to go because it's so limiting. It can only go down. But just I could feel the energy shift as you rephrased my doubts, you know, the person's doubts mm -hmm. into those more empowering phrases. Each um, of the rescripts that you gave, they were filled with possibility. That's what I got energetically, because once they got into that mindset, then possibility opens. Right. And, you know, that's what I love about. You don't have to take giant leaps. You just take incremental steps incremental you take one little action towards something that you want it's then you've shifted the energy and so now it's a little easier to take the next action or the next thought for instance and when you do that you're shifting more energy and then it's easier to get to the next higher thought or the next action you need to take and that's kind of how it works and I you love know, that. just the incremental steps that's what I love about it because it doesn't seem, and I love that chart that you mentioned um, earlier, joy, love, anger, mm -hmm. and because I've all, I'm a visual person, and when you see that chart, usually it's in pretty rainbow colors and all that, I can see, all right, if I'm feeling anxious or if I'm feeling sad, okay, let me just get to the one above it, right? It gives me a visual to work with, so I love that um, chart too. And one of the things, like when you're working with clients or even on yourself, how do you, how does someone identify their limiting thoughts? Because for myself, it was, I would know, I noticed a pattern in the internal conversation once I started being aware. And it was usually related to either self doubt or self worth. But it took me some time to identify 
what those repeating patterns were. Do you work in that energy too? Is sometimes oh. people don't know what it is. Yes, definitely. Uh, one way to do that is to, um, you know, when you're, you, you look at the thought that you have or the, how you're feeling and, you know, our thoughts create our feelings and our feelings drive our actions and our actions create our results. So, you know, if you're feeling not good at, at a particular time, then you might look at, well, what was I just thinking right before that? And then you can identify the thought. And if you've identified a thought, then you can find another thought, like, you know, some incremental thought, and then see how does that make me feel? Do I feel better with that thought? Do I feel about the same? Do I feel worse? Well, if you feel worse, you obviously don't want to go with that thought. <clears throat> if you feel about the same, it's not really helping. But if it makes you feel better, then that's a good thought to go with. And you can try on different thoughts that way. Try your thoughts on for size. <laughs> um, just like you might try a sweater on and see, does it make me feel better? Is it um, is it driving the action? If I feel better from this thought, is it driving the action that I want to take? to get me to the result. Yes, because I remember one of mine in my 20s and 30s, I used the word overwhelmed a lot. So of course, I was always telling myself I was overwhelmed. It became an energy that I expected to live in. And, but I didn't realize it was a pattern, Mary. It just became that. You know, I grew up listening to that. And then one day I'm like, why are you always telling yourself overwhelmed? once you know law of attraction it's going to be you're calling in more but that was one repeating script along with the self-worth and self-doubt but that story of overwhelm now you know my daily mantra my day flows with ease grace and flow um because that's the energy i want to call in so you said something a moment ago too it might be the thoughts but we can also witness how we're feeling because sometimes i uh, not sometimes i believe a lot of times our body will let us know if we're having limiting thoughts. Like I feel it in my gut and solar plexus, I like almost like an anxious rock, um, rock in my belly. So do you notice that too, that our body is always giving us signals to help us identify the thoughts that no longer serve us? Absolutely. Definitely. When I, when I'm thinking a limiting thought, um, I will notice it in the same places that you're talking about. I will notice it there as well. My throat might feel constricted. My shoulders might feel tight and constricted. I'll definitely notice it in my body. And when I start thinking something more empowering or something that feels better, that starts to lighten up and it feels different. I can definitely feel a difference um, when I think that way. And my breathing becomes better when I shift that so definitely there's a um a way to feel that in your body and it's going to be different for everybody and where they feel it um but definitely if it's a negative thought that's not empowering that's constricting you know they, their shoulders might be in and they might be hunched over and kind of like you know protecting themselves for instance well if you're doing that then you're definitely not having thoughts that are empowering and expansive and feel good because when you're having those expansive thoughts that feel good, you know, your shoulders go back, you open up, you're not like protecting your midsection, your, you know, your energy is open now. That's where I feel it too. I really feel it um, in my body more so now that I'm more tuned in since I've been doing this work, I will feel it immediately. Um, and then I shift my thoughts or ask myself a question like, where are you right now, Linda? Because I want to be conscious of where my energy and thoughts are. Yes, I love that. Um, it's great to, to ask yourself, where are you? That's a great question to ask. Yeah, there's sometimes uh, Dana will even go, where are you right now, baby? Because I don't know if you're here. <laughs> um, but so you shared a little bit about how to take a thought to the next level, right? You shared that little flip in the script. Um, what are some other ways that you can support someone in helping them take a thought to the next level? Is Do you do journaling practices or the other strategies you also use with your clients? Yes. Um, one of the things which 
it's kind of a journaling, definitely journaling in its in its traditional sense is helpful. But there's another way where it's just <clears throat> getting all the thoughts that are in your head, just put them on paper. And if you did that every day, you know, in in the evening, for instance, before you go to bed, just put all those thoughts out on paper like a, a thought dump or something. Just put it all out there where you can see what it is you're thinking. And getting it out of your head is helpful too. That's going to help you sleep better. And so, yeah, that's definitely something that I work with my clients on. And then once we can see what those thoughts are and they put them on paper, then we can we can look at changing those thoughts. Oh, I love that because um, in doing that and doing like a brain dump and emotion dump, you, after a while, even after maybe two weeks of doing that, you might see a pattern like, oh, do you notice that every day you're worried about this or you're thinking this? And that's where you know to begin with that client. Exactly. Um, yes, we, we start there and then we figure out like, you know, for instance, we we might want to know where is it you want to get and then we'll work on finding ways to get there with their thoughts and their feelings and their actions, but also just looking at that thought and what that thought is getting them, you know, how is it making them feel and when they feel that way, what is it they're doing, how is that impacting their life, you know, maybe they're having um, constant disagreements with their husband or they're, you know, have some irritation with their husband, for instance, well, they might look at what is their thought that they're having about their husband, you know, and if they shift that thought, if they, um, you know, let him off the hook, <laughs> for instance, for, you know, um, not taking out the trash, you know, that, that they're having a thought about him taking out the trash, him not taking out the trash being a bad thing. And, you know, if they shift that thought to a different thought that, you know, where they're not feeling like him taking out the trash is a bad thing. Maybe they just don't even think about the trash. They just ease up on that and find a different thought that allows them to think of their husband in a happier, better way because we're not responsible for other people's actions. We can't change what they're going to do. So we're only responsible for how we think and what we can do. And so by getting every, getting our thoughts back to us and what we can control is the most helpful thing that we can do. Oh my God, so, so true. I used to project when I was younger and I'm like, the other person isn't doing anything. It's my projections and my thoughts that were created my distress, not the other person. That was my a big relationship um, lesson for me. We're going to take another break, maybe when we come back. Let's um, dive in a little deeper about what else happens when you shift your thoughts. And you can share some tips and strategies. We'll be back in a moment, my friends. You're listening to Inspired Conversations. This is Linda Joy. I'm with Conscious Choices Coach Mary McGuirk. She's also a Master Law of Attraction Coach and Desire Factor Coach. I want to invite you to visit her at lifejustbeyond.com. We'll be back in a moment. The best of the holistic, spiritual, and conscious world. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. Your truest, deepest desires are calling you. The question is, will you answer the call? Former high-tech Fortune 500 leader Sharon Seberg knows how it feels to wear busyness as a badge of honor and to smother her dreams with the expectations of others. Walking away from her successful yet unfulfilling career, she chose to live a life connected to her intuitive wisdom and divine truth, and now lives a life of fulfillment, peace, and abundance. Today, Sharon is a neurotransformational coach, feminine power facilitator, and the visionary founder of the Soul Alignment Formula. She empathetically fuses cutting-edge neuroscience with intuitive coaching supporting successful women to unlock their full potential so they can live a life of authenticity and freedom. Are you ready to excavate your deepest desires and bring them to life? Start by visiting SharonSieberg.com. More than 24 million Americans have an autoimmune disorder, and that number continues to grow. 
I'm Sharon Saylor, and I'm one of those 24 million. To put that number in perspective, cancer affects about 9 million and heart disease up to 22 million. That's why I've brought together top experts and those thriving regardless of their diagnosis to bring you the latest, most up-to-date information. Join me, Sharon Saylor, Friday night, 7 p.m. Eastern, for the Autoimmune Hour on Life Interrupted Radio to find out how to live your life uninterrupted. Hey, hon, what you doing with your phone? Taking pictures? No. I'm asking you questions. Like what? Hey, Bobo, do flowers have best friends? I'm sorry. I'm afraid I don't know that. Hey, follow me. I want to show you something. Look, flowers do have best friends. Whoa. Some answers can only be found in nature. Discover the unsearchable. Visit discovertheforest.org to find a trail near you. Brought to you by the United States Forest Service and the Ad Council. Free your mind with Ohm Times Radio. IOM FM. You're listening to Inspired Conversations. Thank you for circling up with us today. I always love having you all in our energy field, and I know that these conversations will touch and inspire you to live your best life. So share some of the other things that happen when you shift your thoughts, Mary. Um, one of the things that happens when you shift your thought, you're changing your story. Oh, yeah. And <laughs> that's a really important thing to do. When you change your story, you're getting closer to your dream. Um, you're you're feeling more empowered um, to achieve something different. It's it's like a little micro shift. You know, each of those little micro shifts changes the energy, which changes your story. And each time you change your story incrementally, it doesn't have to be a big leap in your story change. <laughs> it can be incremental. Uh, excuse me, incremental achievements and you're changing your story that move you closer and closer to what it is you want. And each time you do that, that also sets new things into action in the universe. You know, all those little incremental shifts start something new and allows the universe to like kind of guide you to where you want to go. Another thing is that when you shift your thoughts, um, that might be if, if, if we use the term shifting our thought versus changing a thought, I think that's easier for most people because changing a thought can feel the word changing can feel daunting. It can feel like it's a permanent thing. Like, you know, maybe I'm really not ready to commit to that thing. It just doesn't feel right. So the word shifting might feel more in alignment with them. Like they can try it on. They can see how it sticks. They can think more incrementally towards it. So an example of an original thought might be something like, I don't have the experience to do that. And if you were to change your thought, you might change it to, I am experienced in this. Well, there's a leap from, I don't have the experience to do this to, I am experienced in this. And that just, maybe that might not feel right. It, you, your brain might be going, yeah, no. <laughs> but shifting, using the word shifting might be easier for someone because then instead of, I am experienced in that, they could shift from, I don't have the experience to do that to, Perhaps I explore how my past experiences can relate to this experience. And then to, yeah, I have had experiences, you know, when I did A and B. So maybe I do have the experience in this area. And then that can shift to, I'm going to choose to say I'm experienced in this, which might shift to, you know, putting your hands on your hips and the superwoman pose. I think it's called superwoman, right? <laughs> and say, I am experienced in this and I am the right person for it. Yes. So those are the kind of things that can happen when you're shifting your thoughts versus, you know, using the word changing, for instance, where it might feel easier to do. I love that word. I, I've always loved that word because it you nailed it. It feels less daunting, right? A change feels so big and permanent, but shifting feels like, I don't know, it just always energetically aligned with me. And I love about the change in your story. And are there any others that you'd like to share? Um, yes, there's, um, I, I mentioned it in the beginning that I wanted to share how you could choose the thought that leads you to the result that you want. And so one way to do that, you know, I mentioned before, your thought leads to your feeling or your thought 
um, creates the feeling that you're having. The feeling drives your action and the action that you take or don't take for that matter um, gives you the result that you have. And so one way to choose the thought is to kind of start with the result. What is the result that you want? Um, for instance, you want your kitchen to be clean each night before you go to bed. And right now it's not. <laughs> and so you want the kitchen to be clean. And so you might, you know, backing into that, you know, what is the action that's going to drive that result? Well, you know, I need to actually take action on getting the kitchen clean. And, um, you know, for me to do that, it's going to have to be fun because, you know, the action, I'm not really taking action now. So I'm going to have to have some fun to do that and make a game out of it. And so, okay, well, how do I have to feel to make a game out of it and have fun doing it? Because, you know, kitchen cleaning is not fun for some people. And <laughs> to make it fun, it's like, okay, I'm going to have to feel a certain way to do that. Well, one feeling you might need to have is mischievous. I need to feel a little mischievous, mischievous to do that. Um, and so then you might look, okay, well, what thought do I need to have to feel mischievous in order to make a game out of cleaning the kitchen and having that be fun? And one thought might be, I can make anything fun, so I can make cleaning my kitchen fun also. So from the thought, I can make anything fun, so I can clean my kitchen and have fun with doing that would give you the feeling of being mischievous, you know, fun. And yes, let's do that. And then the action might be, okay, I'm going to make a game out of this. And so, you know, the kitchen is getting cleaned because I'm making it fun and rewarding and I'm doing things to myself to do that. And, and the result is now that the kitchen is getting cleaned just from changing your thought. And so we kind of backed into it in that way. I love that. And I was laughing because I have a little ritual. It's not uh, mischievous but it's I go okay I'm going to get things done in the morning before I start my day you know making sure the sink is empty all that stuff so I'm like that's not a fun way to start the day come on lady so I put on a favorite audiobook that I listen to in the mornings only while I'm cleaning right so it's on the counter I'm like yeah you know I'm talking to the auto audiobook it became that it was also time I was nurturing myself with that book. So it kind of made my energy around being in the kitchen because the next day I want to get to the book. Does that make sense? So I don't listen to it any other time. And then I notice I'm I'm done quicker in the kitchen instead of going, oh my God, I got to do the kitchen before I get on all my calls and see clients. So I really get that one that you shared because it does change it when we shift our energy and thoughts around it. So I love that was a perfect example of uh, choosing the thought, thought you want. So is that way you help, you help your clients you find rituals and strategies and tools that work for them um, so they can really integrate them in their lives? Yes, we do that together. I just, I, you know, I work with each client to figure out, you know, what is it they need? What is it they want? What do they need? And we work on that and we, we use the thought work and the, you know, the thought and the feeling and the actions and the results. We, we use that to help get them there. And that's so powerful because one of the things, even like for me, exercise, oh goodness, has that been a bane of my existence, right? I, still right, I hear you there. <laughs> yes. Oh my goodness. And I can intellectually tell you all the reasons why I should, but getting my butt on that treadmill, right? And so I had to flip the script because I've had that for 60 years. It's like, I'm done. I, I, I want to be proactive with my health. So again, for me, I'm a big audiobook person, personal and spiritual development. I listen to that, but I found something recently that it gets me excited. 80s music. I'm aging myself here, but I was like, <laughs> I was on the treadmill doing meatloaf, bad out of hell, right? And I'm like, okay, <laughs> how can I, it's like listening to music that lights me up, brings back wonderful memories back in my teens. And I mean, I am energized working out instead of the norm of, oh my God, I have 12 more minutes, <laughs> you know? I notice that I'm staying on it longer. So it's really that, right? Finding patterns, pattern shifters 
and mindset shifters that meet us where we are because everyone's different. Everyone is up. Do you notice like the will the strategies work for everyone or everyone's personality is different? And that's why we have to be able to pick and choose different ones. What have you found? Yeah, right. Exactly. Um, definitely. Each person is different and what works for one doesn't work for another. And so, you know, one, one strategy or process I have might work very well with one person and not so much with another. And so, you know, I have a, a toolbox of things, so to speak, <laughs> to work with, with my clients and figuring out which one is going to work for this person. What is their energy like? And, you know, how do they, do they want to be different? How do they want to be different? And what is their goal with working with me? You know, when they come to work with me, you know, what is the goal they want to achieve? And I don't necessarily mean what is the dream they have, although often that's what it is. But I mean, like, what do you want to achieve while you're working with me? And then, you know, what can I do? What are the processes that I have? What are the things I can do to help them reach that goal that they had in working with me? And I love what you said about um, putting on the 80s music. I do that, too, when I want to get like, you know. Power, um, you know, powered up and feeling strong and fun, and it's like the '80s music is just fun. I love it. <laughs> oh my god, it it is. And I could, I I forgot how it even happened. Someone shared something on Facebook, and it was a song from my childhood that made made me go to YouTube. Next thing I know, for two hours, I was caught up in '80s music, putting around the house, and that's when I made the decision that I love that energy. That's the energy I'm going to get on the treadmill with because it's a different in my body energy feeling. And then it makes working out fun. So that's the flip script I'm trying to flip, right? That exercise um, can be fun. Right. So, so that's a big one. So we're going to take a final break. And when we come back, um, let's talk more about co-creating your dream life because you have a gift for our listeners. And we're going to dive in even deeper, my friends. We'll be back in a moment. I'm with... Conscious Choices Coach Mary McGuire. Visit her at Life Just Beyond. We'll see you for the last segment in a moment. The best of the holistic, spiritual, and conscious world. Om Times Radio, IOM FM. Your worth is not determined by the number on the scale. You are enough right now, exactly as you are. If you're like many midlife women, you've thought, if I could just reach my ideal weight, I'd be so much happier. What we're really craving is our own love and acceptance, and Sarah Haas is that guide for your journey. Sarah is a women's weight release expert and body love coach, and walks alongside midlife women ready to say yes to self-care, self-compassion, and body love so they can become the healthy, vibrant, and unapologetically confident women they're here to be. Her holistic approach integrates nutrition, body movement, and self-care to nurture body, mind, and spirit. Visit sarahaaswellness.com for supportive resources, programs, and more for midlife women ready to reclaim their health. This is Kathy Beal, host of Celestial Compass, featuring astrology you can use. Celestial Compass points you to what's going on in the sky and what you can do with it down here on Earth. We also explore fun, effective, and cosmic tools for navigating this adventure we call life. Join me the first and third Monday of the month at 5 p.m. Eastern Time for Celestial Compass. It's enlightening, entertaining, and empowering. Host your show on IOM FM, the radio network of Ohm Times Media one of the more recognized brand names in the conscious community and is backed by the extensive marketing reach of Ohm Times. Hosting a show on IOM FM immediately connects you with our extensive, dedicated community. Your conscious lifestyle on steroids. Ohm Times Radio. IOM FM. Welcome back. You're listening to Inspired Conversations. We are, I am with Mary McGorick. She is a master law of attraction coach and a desire factor coach. And you can learn more at lifejustbeyond.com. So one of the things um, you talk about and like even your website, um, life just beyond, right? Remember when we met, I was like, oh my God, I love that. <laughs> and so yeah. as I've gotten to know you, your work, your message, it's almost like 
life just beyond your limiting thoughts because exactly. yeah it's like that's how i energetically see it. it's like here you are and what's beyond your limiting thoughts is bigger and brighter and better than you could ever imagine and you and i know that from our own life experience that when you do the work it doesn't mean life is roses and butterflies but it feels more empowering you know you have a set of tools like all the tools and strategies you give your clients to navigate this journey called life with right that is empowering to me yeah you know and that's exactly how I chose the name of the company life just beyond it was the thinking of just beyond the thoughts I'm having now just beyond the life I'm living now is where I want to be and um you know I like to say that just beyond your everyday experiences your desires are calling you to life mm. so that was definitely um what where I was going with with the name and, how, and what I want to do for people it's like let's move you from where you're at to where you want to be yeah and, and I love that um quote and I think you have it somewhere too because I've seen it about the just be on your everyday experiences. It's your heartfelt desires are calling you. Like that speaks to my heart because that's how I want to live my life. I want life to feel magical. And when I see life just beyond and because of the work you do in the world, that's what it kind of feels like. Like, hey, you know what it also reminds me of? I got to tell you, maybe the first time I saw it, um, I'm dating myself. Like the Wizard of Oz, when she just wanted to get to the other side, the other end of the rainbow, right? It's like where her dreams were where mm -hmm. this ideal life is I believe that can happen for all of us I mean you've gone through things in your life I've gone through things in my life so we have life experiences that show our listeners that hey you can change your life whatever area of life that you're thinking of changing whether it's a mindset whether it's health exercise relationships business career abundance it is possible I've done it um, Mary has done it. Mary loves helping clients do it. That to me is just, I think it's magical. I think the law of attraction, um, the way you teach it and blend all your unique methodology. And I love that you use storytelling because you know me with storytelling. I love that you found this, um, this beautiful merging to support women in co-creating their dream life. Um, one of the questions I want to ask, because I always wonder, sometimes people don't know what their dream life is. They can't even identify it because they're so disconnected. So I, I got to believe that working with you helps them even identify what that dream is that they've really forgotten about. Have you found that too? Oh, yes, definitely. And one of the first things I do with people is work with them on figuring that out, figuring out what what do they desire. And often the easiest way, way to figure that out is let's look at what what you don't like, what's not working. And, you know, we, we visit all of that for a short, very short period of time. And then we use that to flip the script to what they do want. Because often it's easier to figure out what you do want if you know what you don't want. Oh, I love that. And it, it's so true because I can remember years ago, like 32 years ago, being in a corporate job. and thinking and you know I'm, I was doing all the shoulds and have tos I had just got off welfare I'm like I gotta get this job and be the responsible person but there was a day that I heard if you stay here your soul's gonna die right mm -hmm. but I had no idea what that meant what I was meant to do or anything you kind of stay frozen because if you don't have that dream to work towards or to dream about or to envision or to get you excited I think sometimes we can get stuck and that's what I notice a lot of my clients feel stuck because they've lost the dream and I, I understand that because I was there back then so I'm so glad that you have a process to help them we you know reconnect with it because I think within all of us we have that seed that was planted in our heart and sometimes it just gets buried under the muck of life so it's like you're the you're the excavator of the dreams, Mary. Yes, definitely. And I love that, that what you just said. Well, I think what we've just forgotten, especially women, we have so many roles to play that sometimes we wake up in the middle of our lives and go, how the hell did I get here? I don't remember planning this. And I think a lot of women are waking up to the 
I think like 40s, 50s, even 60s of waking up going, I'm here. I love my life, but I'm here for something more in that struggling to identify that. And that's why um, the work you're doing in the world, the articles you write, your guest appearances are so important because I want to maybe here today, ladies, to put a spark within you to know that you do have the power to co-create your dream life. It all starts as Mary's been so beautifully sharing with your thoughts. Now, isn't that empowering? Is that you have the power? It's not outside of you. That must be a big thing too, Mary, for, for your clients and even for yourself is that moment you realize, ah, I have the choice. Is that a big eye opener for them? Yes, it really is. <laughs> um, Often we think it's outside of our control, as you mentioned. We think that, you know, that, um, you know, the world is in control. They are in control, whoever they is. <laughs> but once they realize, no, I'm in control, I can control everything with choosing what I want and choosing how I want to feel and choosing how I think. And all of that is the key to get you um, to where you want to go when you know what the what the where is <laughs> and I can help you figure that out too yeah because I think that's the big thing when you said where the where is for years I was lost I was just navigating life but there was no end point there was nothing I was heading to so I was taking all these winding roads and twists and turns and um, switchbacks once I realized what I was here for, even when it was a smaller vision that I have now, it gave me direction, kind of like what you were saying at the beginning about um, the Paris Underground, right? You knew where you wanted to go. Well, you couldn't get there without going through the other towns. And I think we have to identify what our end result is, whether that's a dream, a goal, a shift, a change, a health situation we have to know that so I love that you that you do that deep excavation work with the clients to help them see so then from that moment of knowing where they want to be as you said earlier you backtrack from there with the beliefs and the thoughts and the strategies right exactly and we have fun doing it I got to tell you, ladies, Mary is a lot of fun. She's in some of my groups and um, watching you interact. You just, I love your giggle. And she brings just a lightness and a joy and a beautiful spirit to her work. And I want to invite everyone, we have a couple minutes left. I want to invite everyone, go to lifejustbeyond.com. And at the time of this taping, she has a powerful transformational free gift. Please grab it. It's called Six Steps to Co-Create Your Dream Life. It's a PDF. You, you will find it there on the website. Give yourself that gift. Um, dive into the guide. Check it out. Stay connected with Mary. Of course, check out her articles on Aspire Magazine. And give yourself the gift. You know, schedule a discovery session with her. Because sometimes when you think you're stuck and there's no way out, it just takes another perspective and someone to help you see um, that you're really not stuck. You just need someone to kind of excavate a few things and help you flip the script on a few things. And uh, I invite you again to go to lifejustbeyond.com. Mary, we have about a moment if you want to leave a love note or a message for our listeners. Well, definitely. I, um, you know, I just, I love helping women find what it is they want. I love helping them feel empowered towards getting there. Um, you know, I, I, I love coaching and helping and doing that. It's what lights me up and I want to work with them to find what lights them up. Yeah. The world needs more light ladies. And, you know, one of the best gifts I ever gave myself in those times where I was really, I call it stuck in the muck. I couldn't get out of my own way is I gave myself the gift of a coach back then. You know, that really um, supported me in clarifying my vision and clarifying what was holding me back. Because if we could figure it out by ourselves, we would not be stuck, my friends. Right. So 
Open mm -hmm. your minds to receive. Visit lifejustbeyond.com. Connect with Mary. Continue the, um, the relationship by downloading her free gift, Six Steps to Co-Create Your Dream Life. And Mary, thank you. Thank you for joining me today. I always love circling up with you, my friend. Well, thank you, Linda. I enjoyed it. It was great to have this conversation with you. And to everyone listening, I'm going to give Mary's URL one more time. That's lifejustbeyond.com. Until next time, my friends, choose love, choose joy, choose happiness. Blessings. Thanks for listening to Inspired Conversations with publisher Linda Joy. Join our sacred space every Tuesday at 2 p.m. Eastern and meet leading female visionaries, empowering authors, heart-centered female entrepreneurs, coaches, and healers. Inspired Conversations with Linda Joy is a soulful venue where guests share the obstacles they've overcome, along with wisdom and lessons learned on their personal journey that led them to the transformational work they do in the world. Inspired Conversations to empower you on your path to authentic and soulful living.